Hi, welcome to the summary of integration and its application written based on the O-Level Additional Mathematics Syllabus. This video is part of our 5 minutes of additional mathematics series, where we go through an entire O-Level additional math chapter in 5 minutes. Do take a minute to like our video and subscribe to our channel. Let's start off with integration by looking at the formulas. So let's look at the integration of algebraic functions. So when the power of x is n, where n is not negative 1, then this is what you do. You raise the power by 1, then divide by the new power. Okay, and if you have this ax plus b to the power of n, where n is not negative 1, then to integrate it, you increase the power by 1 and then divide by the coefficient of x and the new power. So take note, right, the power of x must be 1 here, and this must be a linear function, okay? In other words, it must be strictly ax plus b, okay, in order for you to use this formula. So we talk about n cannot be equals to negative 1. So what happens when n is equals to negative 1? Well, when n is equals to negative 1, x to the power of negative 1 is simply 1 over x. So when you integrate 1 over x, you will get ln x plus c. Okay, then you'll be, uh, so for O level, right, you do not need to write a mod sign here because you haven't learned modulus function. But in A levels, right, instead of writing just simply ln x, you need to put a mod sign here. So for those of you who are not taking the Singapore O level exams, right, check your syllabus. Some of you might have learned modulus, then you instead of writing just ln x here, you might need to write a modulus. Okay, if you were to integrate 1 over ax plus b, then you'll get 1 over a ln bracket ax plus b plus c where c is an arbitrary constant okay uh, very strict here must be ax plus b it cannot be ax squared plus b and so on okay next remember when you differentiate e to the power of x you get e to the power of x so when you integrate e to the power of x you get e to the power of x plus c if you are to integrate uh, e to the power of ax plus b you'll get 1 over a e to the power of ax plus b plus c so take note it must definitely have a power uh, here it must be definitely ax plus b okay so the power of x must be 1 if not you cannot use this formula you also learn integration of trigo so remember um wherever you want to integrate trigo right sine must be power 1 cosine must be power 1 and sigma must be power 2 Okay, if not, you need to use trigger identity in order to integrate them. So remember, when you integrate sine, you get minus cosine. Integrate cosine, you get sine. Integrate secant square, you get tangent. And here, the angle will never change. So if here is x, here will also be x. If here is ax plus b, here will always be ax plus b. Okay, but the only difference is when you were to integrate um, something that has, uh, when the coefficient of x is not 1, right? You have 1 over a here. Okay, so take note of this. Okay, remember there's no quotient rule, no product rule um, for integration. So you can only use identity to change sine cosine to power 1 or secant to power to 2. Okay, if um, the question gives you something that is not, that's, that does, does not look like this. Okay, and I think to take note, all these angles here must be in radian mode. This formula is only applicable for radian mode. Next, let's talk about definite versus indefinite integral. So for definite integrals, right, you have numbers here, b, a, f, x, dx. Okay, and your final answer here will be constants, constant terms. Okay, for indefinite integral, what you have here is an expression in terms of x. So for example, it's gx plus an arbitrary constant. So let me give you an example. So if I were to integrate 3x squared dx, this is a, an indefinite integral. So I'll get um, x cubed plus c. Okay, but if I were to integrate um, 3x squared uh, from 0 to 3, so this is a definite integral because there are numbers here beside the integration sign. So I have x cubed, 3, 0. Okay, no more plus c. Okay, I'm going to sub 3 into x cubed. Okay, then I'll minus sub in 0 into x cubed. So I'll get 27. So it's a constant term. All right, now let's look at the application of integration. So firstly, right, we learned that integration is the reverse of differentiation. So in other words, right, I know that um, from y to dy dx, I differentiate it, right? Okay, and if I differentiate dy dx again, I get d square y dx square. So if I want to find, I have d square y dx square, I want to find dy dx, I'll integrate it. Okay, similarly, uh, when I integrate dy dx, I get y uh, plus c, of course, if it's an indefinite integral. Another application of integration is to find area. So uh, 
let's assume that we have this curve here from, okay, so this is A, this is B, this is C, okay? So if I want to find the shaded area here, which I call A, so area of A is simply um, integration of, so the top will be the bigger number, the bottom will be the smaller number, and let me call this Y equals to FX, okay? Okay, so basically to find the area of A, it will be integration of fx from B to C with respect to x. Okay, okay why is it uh, dx? This is because we are finding the area between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, if, uh, okay, uh, hold on. Uh. So let me find this. So now I'm interested in area B. So area of B will be equals to because b is below the x-axis right so if you have to integrate it from a to b you'll get a negative answer so what uh but area should be positive so you put a negative sign in front okay when you do the integration okay alternatively you can just put a mod okay so i i know for um o level syllabus you haven't learned modulus because it's out of your syllabus now okay but if Putting a mod simply means that if you get a negative answer, you just write it as positive. If it's positive, it just remains positive. Okay? Let's continue with the application of integration for finding area. Saying that you integrate with respect to um, x because it is the area between the curve and the x-axis. So what happens if I want to find the area between the curve and the y-axis? For example, this. And here's a, here is b. Well, I will need to make x the subject and express it in terms of y and to find the area of sh shaded area okay i will integrate with respect to y okay because i'm finding area between the curve and the y axis okay from a to b okay so i will integrate it in this manner next let's talk about finding area between two curves so, for example, I have this curve here, uh, y equals to fx here, and this is y equals to gx. And here is a, and here is b, and I am interested to find this area here. So, shaded area will be equals to the higher curve. So, if you look at this, right, because, okay, firstly, I am going to integrate with respect to dx okay so everything is in terms of y so i will take the one that is higher has a higher value of y which in this case is this curve here gx minus the curve that is lower in y value which is fx so i'll take gx minus fx okay gx minus fx and integrate it from B, um, a to b to find the area of the shaded region what happens if I am looking at these two curves here? Okay, maybe here it's A, and no A is negative now, here it's B. Okay, it doesn't matter. So now um, let me call this Y equals to GX, and sorry, it shouldn't be Y equals to GX, it should be X. Okay, this one is x equals to um, gy, and so this is the curve here, and this curve here is x equals to fy. How do I find the shaded area? Well, to find the shaded area, right, I know in this case, I'll be integrating with respect to dy, okay? And when I'm uh, integrating with respect to dy, right, um, hold on. Okay, I am going to look at um, which one has a higher x value. Okay, so in other one, other words, right, if you are going to find area between two curves and you're integrating with respect to dy, it will be the right hand side, the one that is further right minus the one that is further left. So it will be G at gy minus fy. Okay. Okay, and you integrate it from A to B, and this will give you the area of the shaded region. Alright, 
So I've gone through the summary for the entire integration and its application chapter. Uh, if you want to learn in detail, do check out our course. Um, I've provided a link below. Okay. So once you have learned all the concepts, right, do practice um, questions because uh, it's very important to learn how to apply them. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Meanwhile, check out our other videos.